What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live Monday night beer review. And tonight, I have a new microphone. This is the Blue Yeti Blackout. I had some extra gift card balance on Amazon, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to grab this. Plus, I got a pretty good deal on this. I believe I paid like $83 for this, so I think these typically run $100 plus. So figured I'd give it a go, try to improve the quality of my live streams, although to be fair, probably never going to be able to improve the quality of my live streams because they're shit. They'll always be shit. And I don't think this is going to help. But let me know what you guys think of the audio quality. How is the uh, volume? I tried to make it even to my old microphone, but I don't know. I'm terrible, absolutely terrible with technology. So uh, let me know what you guys think. In the meantime, let me introduce the beers that I'm going to be reviewing today. And so I've done this a couple times, but today I'm doing a comparison review of two different vintages of the same beer. And today those beers come from Clown Shoes and they're out of Boston, Massachusetts. And I have their, I have a truck going by, but I also have their chocolate sombrero. This is a 2018 can and their chocolate sombrero. This is a 2012 bottle. So on the label, I find this interesting, but on the label it says Mexican style chocolate stout. Great, that's cool. Then underneath it says ale brewed with natural flavors and natural flavors added. So let me get this straight. You're going to brew it with natural flavors, but then you're going to add more natural flavors. Why not just say L brewed with natural flavors? Why do you need to say natural flavors added? I have no idea. Luckily, on the side of the bottle, um, I'm not going to read it because I don't want to. I don't want to move it right now. But it says that it's brewed with roasted dark malts, extra chocolate malts, ancho chili cinnamon and vanilla extract so that's what they're actually brewing it with i don't know why they just don't say that underneath it but whatever what are you going to do um both of these beers come in at nine percent alcohol by volume six ibus and at the time of review this can is like i said a 2018 can now i don't think they do uh, yearly releases of this i think this is a rotating offering maybe even a yearly or sorry a, a year-round release but the can that i have is just over one year old because the can down date is five five eighteen and the bottle is a 2012 bottle. It was bottled in March of 2012, which puts it just over seven years old. So we have basically a six-year difference between these two beers. I've had this beer numerous times fresh. I've actually had the 2012 fresh. It's a pretty damn tasty beer. But I always wanted to see how A, it would age after a year with all those adjuncts, and then after seven years. And I don't know. So um, before we get into a little bit about the live stream and what to expect in the next couple of weeks and stuff, let me check out the... Uh, the ch um, uh, chat over here. It says, uh, we got Craig from Kent Beer Review says, congrats on 400 subs already, son. Well, thank you very much, Craig. I do appreciate it. I did hit 400 subs. Um, I believe my buddy Greg Bylog, who will never be on the channel except for when he is probably at the uh, bottle share before the night of the 2019 Albino Rondo Beer Review or Beer Fest. Uh, review Fest. It's all the same. Uh, but uh, yeah, he, um, he unsubbed purposely to uh, get me under 400 and put me at 399. So that's on him. Uh, what else we have? We have Nick from Maxwell Star says, large penis microphone. Yeah, no, this is, this is huge. I'm, Jamie's going to have a lot of fun with this as far as, uh, you know, Photoshop should be good. Jake says, hey, Joe. And then Nick says, sounds good. Still sounds you like your voice though. Yeah, that's unfortunate. What's up, Jake? What's up, Nick? Um, Drunken One says, hey, gang. Jesse says, cheers. What's up, Jesse? Bumpy Road Brewery. Check out his channel. Uh, Christoph420 says, what up, Joe? And mates. What's up, Christoph? Uh, Eric Gilbert says, cheers to adjunct. Braz. Yeah, all the adjuncts. All the adjuncts. Uh, Nick says, agreed. Congrats on 400. You earned it. Well, thank you very much, Nick. Uh, the rare, um, I, I don't know how to, I don't even know how to react to that. Like, you gave me a compliment, Nick? What the hell? Um, Christoph says, sipping on Wasatch Polygamy a Nitro Porter. Yeah, that, that's, now that's Chris over at Off the Tens Jam. He says, absolutely delicious, 6% ABV and super chocolatey. Nice. Uh, Craig says, yeah. I said something in my review recently, Ari, uh, natural flavors added. Yeah. I remember watching your review and I believe yours was 7%, right? Uh, right, Craig, I'm pretty sure yours was 7%, which was interesting because these are both nine. And I know you mentioned that in your review. Um, Christoph says, grats on, uh, 400 son. Thank you very much, Christoph. And then, uh, Nick says he's drinking a 2018 central city Imperial Porter aged on low in McKinnon barrels. Wow. That sounds fucking pretty delicious. How is it, Nick? Are you reviewing it? Let's hope you're reviewing it. And then uh, Christoph says, mm, to that. And last but not least, we have Jack, Jake, who says he went to Voodoo today, picked up one of those fancy Tiku glasses. Going to try it out while I watch that. Yeah, Jake, that's what I'm talking about. Got to get on those Tikus, man. Got to get on those Tikus. It was like 15 bucks, right? I mean, a little bit expensive, but I mean, they're classy. They're classy. Anyway, uh, let's crack this. Oh, well, first off, let me 
talk first uh, to the people watching this back on replay at this point. If you're watching it, you're probably invested. But um, I will post link or timestamps in the description box to each of one of these reviews and the Kovi. I'm going to do a Kovi, obviously. So if you want to just jump in there, um, I usually do that. Within two hours after the live stream ends, a lot of times we do a post show on Nick's channel or Redbeard channel or something. So sometimes I don't get to until around midnight, but uh, I will put timestamps if you're watching this back so you can jump right into whatever review you want. I always do that. For those of you watching live, clearly you guys know to comment and I read them all, even though I shouldn't. Some of them are terrible. I'm looking at you, Greg. Greg doesn't even watch this or whatever. Um, Paul, Paul will own. Paul will probably be terrible tonight. Um, anyway. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, this is mostly for raining on your parade, but, uh, usually I'm like, Hey, the beers next week I'm going to review in case you want to pick them up. Unfortunately, the next two Mondays, I am not going to be live streaming next week. I'm going to be unavailable, but the following week is the Monday after the, uh, 2019 albino rhino beer festival. As I already mentioned, we do a bottle share the night before. So there's a lot of beer consumed on Friday, a lot of beer consumed on Saturday and the following week to 10 days, I always just recuperate. I just don't drink for those seven to 10 days. So uh, maybe I'll do a live stream and just like a bullshit, like have some friends on, but not drink alcohol myself. But I'm definitely not going to be doing any live reviews the next two Mondays. We're going to come back. Let me get the calendar out here. I think it's June. Uh, yeah, June 3rd will be the next time I do a live uh, stream. If you have any suggestions for live beer reviews, you guys tell me what you want to see. Um, I can pick up a lot of beers, a lot of commercially available beers. Um, I had one um, suggestion from Ring Air Parade, which was Lefe, uh Blonde and the Brune. Um, I haven't grabbed those yet, mostly because not my favorite styles, but I will get to them at some point. But if you have any suggestions, I like to usually review two beers from the same brewery, whether they're like this, the same beer in different vintages or two different beers. Most of the time, that's what I like doing, so I don't have to do two separate videos. But anyway, just thought I would mention that. Let me crack this open. And after I crack this open, what I'm going to do is um, read the comments, and then we're going to go gonna go nuts. Anyway, let's give a pour here. So again, this is the 2018. It was canned on 5518. So we're looking at, like I said, somewhere around... Um, yeah, somewhere around, uh, I don't know, 53 weeks old. I have no idea. Something like that. It's just over a year old. Anyway, let's get a uh, let's get a look, see at the uh, comments here. We have Nick says, yeah, tasty and a back deck review forthcoming. Oh, so Nick's busting out the back deck reviews. That's how you know the weather is turning for the, the better. Uh, Nick says he's going to release it, though, in 2020 because clearly he's uh, not very prompt. Uh, Jake says 1415 to be exact. Sure, it'll be worth every penny, though. Definitely looks pretty. Yeah, I, I think I paid like 15 or 16 for mine. So maybe it was they, they, they've lowered the price. Um, Maxwell Star says, review a barrel-aged, non-alcoholic, gluten-free, hot garbage beer on May 27th. Um, no, no, that's not going to happen. Sorry, Nick, none of that. Uh, none of that. If they actually make a barrel-aged, non-alcoholic, gluten-free, hot garbage beer, I'll review it. You find it for me, Nick, and I'll review it. <laughs> Christoph says, oh, man, look at the froth on that pour. Looks good. Eric Gilbert says, Colby. And Joe Ganzel says, cheers all. What's up, Joe? Thanks for stopping by, buddy. And then Christoph says, cheers, Eric. A buddy friend. Yeah, so that looks awesome. That looks super frothy. Pitch black, even when I was pouring it out. But a two finger of a very rocky uh, head here. It, it looked really frothy when I was pouring it, almost nitro-like. But as it settled, huge, big bubbles here. Looks kind of soapy. In the middle, though, it's really weird. I, I don't really care too much about the appearance of the beer typically, but the out there's like an outside layer to the head here. That's like soup, soap sudsy. And then in, in the middle, it's super creamy looking. I don't even know. I don't even know. It's terrible. Anyway, let's get a nose. Yeah, it smells all right. Yo, listen, listen, this smells like a, smells like an imperial style. We're going to do ASMR, uh, ASMR beer reviews tonight, buddies. Yeah, it has a lot of chocolate, a lot of like Baker's chocolate, um, you know, dark chocolate, 50, 60, 70% cacao bar. A little bit of that vanilla and cinnamon. Again, the reason why I really wanted to review this for the most part was because I want to see how these adjuncts react a year out, seven years out. I've had this fresh. I remember the cinnamon and vanilla being there, big chocolate beer. The, the peppers were nice as well. I'm going to inhale the head because it looks so delicious. Yeah, so dark roasted malts. There's some chocolate. 
Baker's chocolate, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of vanilla, uh, not really picking up on any coffee or anything. And I'm really not getting the peppers. I thought like the ancho chilies would be huge and in my face and stuff. Not really. It's a, it's a year older, but I still, I feel like I'm going to get it in the taste, probably a slight, like, you know, slight burn in the back of the throat or something. Both of these beers. Oh, hang on. Yeah. As I went back, a little bit of chili now and the cinnamon's kicking up. Both of these beers have been out of the fridge for about an hour. So appropriate temperature, probably 55, 60. Paul, I'm not drinking it. You know, super warm. Settle down, buddy. Got a lot of, a lot of comments here. Crazy stuff going back and forth. Uh, Jesse says he had this around six years ago, uh, which is crazy. That's pretty much the first time I had it was 2012. This bottle, the, well, the one is off camera now because I don't want it to be in the way. But 2012 was when I had the 2012 vintage and I enjoyed it. I had it a couple times since then, but probably not in the last three years. Uh, Nick says, definitely going to be a Colby before the night's out. Yeah, definitely going to be a Colby. Uh, Nick says, Joe has to go for the four-time multiplayer combo move, Colby combo. All right, I'm just settle down, Nick. Uh, Christoph says, finish him. Jesus Christ, we're getting into all kinds of crazy stuff. All kinds of Mortal Kombat. I'm into it. Street Fighter, let's do it. Beertality for Nick. Nick, Jesus Christ. Um, Eric says, what is up to Christoph Abro? A lot of Canadian slang being thrown around. Um, hacking darts and sipping some Utah stout. Anyway, let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. There's only certain things I can quiet down myself. And it's when I drink a beer that's either amazing or a beer that's super underwhelming. Let me just say, this beer is fucking super underwhelming. It's super underwhelming. Um, first off, this beer is pretty bitter at this point. I don't know what happened here. Yeah. Um, slightly oxidized. There's a little bit of cardboard thing going on, even though it's in a can, even though it's only a year old. Uh, very like charry, bittering, roasty, toasted notes. The thing that's kind of disappointing me right now, just based on the first couple sips, uh, it doesn't have much sweetness behind it. It actually is lacking in sweetness in general. It's just kind of, yeah. Hmm. All right. So first off, body, 9%. It's like higher side of medium body, lower side of full body. It actually has a little bit of a syrupy thing going on. So actually the body is probably the best thing about this, the most redeeming quality at this point. The mouthfeel, it's not super carbonated. Uh, it's soft. It's relatively smooth, not really creamy at all, but I'd say the body and the mouth feel pretty damn good for this beer. The taste, though, is where it gets lost for me. So right up front, I'm just hit with like a lot of charry, ashy, like roasted malt character. So it passes through the uh, palate. The one thing I do like about it, there's there's some dark fruit in here, like sweeter dark cherries, a little bit of like raisin plum thing, like something you would typically get from some Imperial Stouts at times. But as it as it finishes, it finishes pretty damn bitter. Um, it has a lingering bitterness that's mixing in with a, a little bit of a cinnamon kick, but it's super dry, super bitter. And number one, not a ton of chocolate, really not any at all. Vanilla is gone. Cinnamon's on the back end. And I'm really not even picking up like a substantial chili burn at this point. Um, yeah, this kind of has fallen flat. Now, again, I haven't had this beer in three or four years. I think they were bought by Harpoon. They used to brew at uh, the Mercury Brewing. How do I know that? Because on the 2012 label over here, it says uh, it's brewed at the Mercury Brewing, and uh, I believe that was in Ipswich, um, Massachusetts. So they're bought out, I'm pretty, pretty sure, by Harpoon. They have started brewing, I'm pretty sure, at Harpoon's facilities. And um, yeah, I, I don't know if this is because I aged a year or because the beer has changed substantially. Now I'm curious if I should go and pick up a fresh can at some point, but this is very disappointing. Yeah, super disappointing. Let me read some comments. That's much more interested than drinking this disappointing beer. Um, Jake says, brutality. How many puns can we possibly get going at one time? Joe Gansel says, what is everyone drinking tonight? Yeah, I, I don't always ask that, but always feel free. If you guys watch this, to post what you're drinking. You're drinking along with me. Let me know what you're drinking. Joe says he's enjoying a bail breaker Imperial IPA called Bottom Cutter. Are you enjoying that, Joe? It sounds pretty delicious. Uh, Max Star says, yeah, that wins. Uh, Christoph reiterates Was Wasatch, uh, Polygamy, um, Nitro Stout. Jake says, damn, for a second there, it looked like you loved it. Yeah, no, I, I, I know that that's usually when I stop talking in general, either I love or hate a beer. And this one 
I shouldn't say I hate it. Super underwhelmed. Super, super underwhelming. Uh, Nick says, again, he's drinking the 2018 Central City Imperial Porter. Uh, Christoph says, or if you lose the fight, drain pour. Ha, ha, ha. No one's drain pouring anything, even if you lose the fight. So many Mortal Kombat and fighting game references right now. Uh, Jake says he got a Clown Shoes Mango Kolsch. Nice, Jake. Let me know what you think. I thought that was pretty refreshing for the season, like right now as we're getting into later uh, spring here, early summer upcoming. Uh, Nick says he's drinking a Red Racer Super Fruit IPA. Mm. Now, Joe uh, Joe says that sounds good at Jake and then says, how is the Red Racer to Nick? Now, that Red Racer, whenever I hear Racer, I always think of Bear Republic, Racer 5. But Red Racer is a brewery, I believe, on the West Coast. Are they out there? Where are they, Nick? Calgary? Somewhere in Alberta? Maybe it's British Columbia? I forget. Maybe I think it's British Columbia, actually. Maxwell Star Nick says, tasty stone fruits, tropical floral, but a bit thick. Just a bit thick. Um, Jesse says, it was underwhelming when I had it. I never picked it up again. Well, there you go. Uh, Joe says, check out a fresh one. Um, uh, Jake says, it kind of isn't, Joe. Much like the chocolate sombrero. <laughs> sombrero, it's underwhelming. I'm sorry, man. I remember enjoying that one, but again, I haven't had that beer in like four or five years. So again, my uh, my palate has changed immensely in four or five years. Maybe this beer is the exact same beer, and I just my palate has changed so so much so that you know doesn't matter. Um, Eric Gilbert says smoking gars is better than hacking darts all day and burning an L. Fucking Eric Gilbert. Nick says Red Racer Central City is from Surrey, BC. So there there you go, Surrey, a British Columbia for those uh, American folks that are not familiar. Um, Christoph says he has gummies too, Eric, but yeah, a gar is hackable for sure. And then Nick says, same company, the red racer, obviously in central city. And, uh, Ashley says classing up the joint, keeping it real with world-class kokanee, hopefully not two of them. And hopefully not the flying saucer. That's all I'm saying, Ashley. Anyway, finish up on this beer, um, rating and just final thoughts. I've had a shit ton of Mexican Imperial stouts at this point. And this is at the bottom, bottom for me. Uh, I will say, as it's uh, opening up in the glass, getting a little bit more of that ancho chili, the cinnamon's becoming a bit more in your face. This is very spicy, very ashy, very charry. Uh, I'd need a lot more sweetness, and I'd like some vanilla and more chocolate from this one. For something that calls itself a Mexican-style chocolate uh, stout, I'm not really getting much chocolate. So, uh, again... This is, you know, take this for what it is. This is a, a can that's over a year old that I aged and it probably changed from, you know, being a fresh beer. But as far as my enjoyment level on this, as we speak, I can't go higher than a three out of five on this. And I'm pretty much in between like a two, seven, five and a three out of five. So I'm just going to give this a 2.8 out of five. So like a high 2.75. I know, I don't know math, Nick, but like 2.8 out of five. I think this might be the... Honestly, this might be the lowest rated beer on my channel at this point, or one of them. This this is just not a great beer. I'm just not enjoying it. I'm going to put it to the side, save it for the Koovie. Fucking hopefully it does something that improves it, but I don't know. Anyway, time to crack open the 2012. So the 2012, different label, completely different label. Um, it's a completely, yeah, it's way different. And, uh, they actually have a spiel here and says, it says roasted dark malts, plus extra chocolate malts, plus ancho chili, plus cinnamon, plus vanilla extract, but to chocolate loving beer drinking clown shoes, wearing multi limbed, gorgeous and glorious Mexican wrestler on the label. That's the recipe for a chocolate sombrero. And like I said, it says Mercury Brewing Company, Ipswich, Massachusetts. And, uh, this one was bottled in March of 2012. Let me cleanse the palate, read some more comments, and then, uh, I'll crack that one open. I actually have a bucket here on the ground just in case it fucking just decides to explode. I've, I've always had one here just for older beers. Cause you never know when an infection is going to kick. And I don't want my laptop and my microphone and everything to get fucked up. Uh, Jake says my palate is awful more often than not. I can't say much beyond. I like this or I don't like that. Well, Jake, uh, here's a, here's a secret. Here's a secret. My palate is also absolutely terrible. So uh, you and me, one in the same. Actually, when it comes down to it, Jake, that's all that matter matters, right? Whether you like it or you don't, that's it. And to, and to varying degrees of how much you like it, right? Uh, Nick says, Kokanee, the beer out here. I miss Kokanee. Nick, take that back. Christoph says, two out of five is where my money is on the rating. Jesse says, it's a fair score. 
Nick says, wow. Christoph says, pi out of five. Yeah, it's not even as good as pi out of five. Uh, Nick says, less than three, which he, yeah, that's 2.8 out of five is less than three. Eric Gilbert says, he's not drinking, but warming up a Kobe Mamzell Sons shelf turd whales tonight. Jesus Christ. Jake says, so Joe, what's your take on the dogfish Sam Adams merger? I guess we'll talk a little bit at the end about that. Uh, Joe says, you are going to lose a lot of the adjuncts on a beer that hope it is good. Yeah, that's the thing. I know going into this, Joe, without a question, that 2012 is probably going to be an absolute mess. Um, now, after drinking the 2018, the year old one, the adjuncts have pretty much fallen off. That ancho chili and the cinnamon's there, vanilla, no, that chocolate, no. So I think this is going to be a mess of a beer, but I've had it fresh in 2012. So aging it for seven years, I do it for science or because I'm an idiot, maybe a combination. Uh, Earth says clown shoes. Yeah, I, I regret not saying that earlier, Earth, but I thought that was the obvious joke to make, so I didn't. Um, Jesse says, if you coovy two crap beers, it becomes a super villain. Well, I guess we'll see. So let me crack this one open and see if it goes everywhere, and if it does, I have a bucket. Maybe, so It's uh, fine. We are fine. So let me give it a little bit of a pour ski here. So first thing I tell you is pouring this out. This definitely pours out a lot lighter and less carbonation, but I'm not surprised by that, mostly because, um, you know, it's 12 years old. It's going to lose some oxidation, I believe. And, uh, yeah, we're going to put the cap right on here if I can do it. Oh, let me do it. Can I do it? Holy shit, I'm a mess. I can't do it. Anyway, so, yeah, that pours out similar in the glass to uh, the 2018. The difference being this is definitely 100% lighter. Uh, on camera, it's probably going to look the same, but totally not. has about a half finger of a mocha-colored head. I'd say this beer looks pretty similar. Now I'm actually looking at that beer in the glass. You're not going to tell, but, yeah, that's very similar in color, head color and everything. So, anyway, let's get a nose. It actually doesn't smell bad. Um, not really picking up on a bunch of adjuncts off the get-go. Yeah, so this one actually has more, believe it or not, and again, you have to take in consideration this this uh, bottle is over seven years old. This actually has more vanilla than the one that was one year old. It has cinnamon. It's coming off almost as like a, uh, this is coming off quite sweet. This actually has very big dessert vibes to this one. A little bit of that uh, ancho chili. Oh, actually, more cinnamon and chili as I swirl it, let it open up a bit. Yeah, um, there's not as much chocolate in this one. This one's more about vanilla, cinnamon, the peppers. It's not as roasted. It's not as chocolate heavy in the nose. But man, it, it listen, here's the problem with aging beers. And uh, you guys have seen some of my reviews from my uh, Barrel Age Bigfoot that I did, the 2013 vintage, to the Chocolate OK Jetty I did last year, which was the 2012 vintage. You're always playing with fire when there's barrel aging, oak aging, adjuncts involved. A lot of things are going to fall off. A lot of things are going to change. Dealing with infections. A lot of things can happen, right? More often than that, you should always drink it fresh, buy an extra bottle to age, and probably not age it as long as some of these beers, unless you... Yeah, unless you have an actual just like base beer that can age for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years, uh, like, you know, barley wines and old ales and big imperial stouts and stuff, nothing that really has anything else going on in it. This one, I tell you right from the get go, not ideal, not smart to age this one for seven years. Of course, I'm not smart. You guys know this from watching my channel. So that's why I aged it. But anyway, as it is right now, this actually smells quite good. Is it going to be as good as the 2018? I have no idea. That's why we try it. So cheers, everyone. Yeah, it's better. It's better. I'm going to read the comments and just let my mind process it a little, little bit. Um, Christoph says, Joe, imagine how blow chunkable an age hemper would be. Yeah, that would be terrible. Alex uh, Dudick shows up and says, what's up, everyone? Joe going big time with this mic, Jesus. Uh, yeah, I mentioned this at the beginning, Alex. I just I bought this. Uh, there was a sale on Amazon. I had some extra gift card balance to the tune of like, I think it was like 35 bucks. So I was just like, let me see if I can improve the quality of my stream. Uh, and I think I, I hope I sound okay. Um, hopefully it's a little bit more clear, I guess. I guess I'll see on the playback. You guys say it's all good. So hopefully it is. Um, Christoph says, got that Joe Rogan mic play set. Yeah, and I need to get the uh, the boom arm and the fucking, the, the, what do you call it? The shock mount. And then I'll be living large. You know what I mean? Eric Gilbert says, physics it. Uh, of course, that he's on the wrong channel. That'd be Chris at over off the 10th. Uh, Christoph says, sup, Earth. How's that Kelly squad? 
I agree. Uh, Jake says, so aging anything with a lot of adjuncts is usually a no-no. Uh, Joe says, uh, I always buy two big beers, drink one fresh and age one. Yeah. So basically what just Joe Gansel just said, Jake, do not, the preference and I, what most people tell you is if you're going to be able to drink one beer and one beer only, do not put substantial age on it, no matter what the beer is, because you want to drink it fresh for what the brewer intended it to be. So buy two bottles of whatever and age the second one. The thing you got to understand going into aging beer is that there's a lot of moving parts when you're aging adjunct beers. When you have like four or five different adjuncts, there's a lot of things that can fall off, a lot of things that can bump up. You're you're, you're basically just, you know, it's a crapshoot. So there's no real rhyme or reason to uh, age beers in general, other than you want to see how it changes. But my preference is always aging base beers, base styles. Like I said, old ales, barley wines, imperial stouts, things like that. Usually higher AB, ABV beers. Um, you're in for a treat more often than not when you age some of those beers. When you're talking about adjunct and barrel aged beers, a lot of things can go wrong. Not recommended. Uh, Ali says, Joe is a beer tuber for the people, but this is no longer average Joe material. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. No, I'm still pretty average, Alex. I do appreciate it. He, did, he does say no longer. I did correct that for you even before reading that, Alex, because I knew what you meant. It's a typo. I'm not going to lose my shit. I'm not Redbeard. Shout out to Redbeard. Uh, Jesse says, well, whiskey is all adjuncts with the corn. True. Uh, Christoph says, Joe has lost mad weight and still does beer reviews. Cheers, Joe. Well, thank you, Christoph. Um, yeah, I, I have. I've lost almost 50 pounds, and I pretty much post a beer review a day. It's possible. You just got to watch those calories and uh, forgo a lot of sweets and snacks and stuff. Alex says, also, now that you have this new mic, uh, you got to start podcasting. I don't think anyone wants to hear a podcast from me, Alex. Let's be honest. Anyway, let's go back to this beer since I sipped on it once. Let me get another sip in it. Body and mouthfeel is very akin to the 2018. Maybe slightly thinner, probably higher side of medium body, not approaching low full. The mouth feels soft, smooth, maybe a bit creamy, uh, a bit more creamier than the um, 2018. The taste, though, I'm getting a decent amount of chocolate. Yeah, decent amount of chocolate. It's definitely oxidized. There's a cardboard taste in here, uh, probably on the same level as the 2018. But I'm getting more chocolate. It's a sweeter dark chocolate. I'm getting a little bit of the cinnamon. The chili pepper is gone at this point. The vanilla is not really that big. But like as far as just, if you told me, you handed me this blind and was like, here, do you like this? Yeah, it's okay. It's an okay beer. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's not infected. Uh, outside of the oxidation, there's really nothing wrong with it. I'm not picking up on the vanilla really, or the ancho chilies, but, um, yeah, it's a good Imperial stout. I would not, if I was doing this blind, no way, no way I'd be able to tell you this is a Mexican style uh, chocolate stout. I'd probably think that slight pepper astringency on the back end would be just like a slight astringency from the beer, maybe a little bit of bitterness. I would just think this is a, you know, Imperial stout that has bigger roasted, uh, roasted malts, darker malts, chocolate malts, things of that nature, which it does. I forgot to mention on that one, this one, I will say another redeeming quality from both of these 9%. I can't tell you this is probably over seven. These hide the alcohol extremely well. I don't know if that's worth anything to anybody, but that's just how it goes. Um, Eric Gilbert says aged Colby's baby. Yeah, we're getting there. Settle down, Eric. You know, settle down. Settle down. Um, <laughs> Craig also says Saison's for the aging. Saison's do age well. Um, uh, Nick says ASMR Joe gagging on a sub three out of five beer. I mean, yeah, let's do it. Ah, ASMR. Anyway, um, Christoph says it's my scientifically researched diet called the fork. Put it down in store soon. Yeah, just eat less, less calories, more exercise. Although I can't really do that, but. I've lost 50 pounds with minimal exercise, just walking. It can be done. Um, Joe uh, Gansel says, yes, they open up with more age, Craig. So yeah, Saison's are definitely another one. Belgian beers in general age well from quads to, to pretty much anything. I mean, triples, a lot of them age extremely well. Um, Nick says, kind of disappointing if Clown Shoes has lost their way. I can't really base what Clown Shoes is doing on two beers that I aged myself. Um, I do remember both. I listen, you're talking about a beer that I had for the first time back in 2012. Can anybody out here tell me in 2012 what like Mexican style um stouts were getting decent distribution? Cause there weren't many. Like Chocaveza from Stone, I want to say 
first time I got like big distro was 2013, 14. That was like at the um, cusp of people starting to do their Mexican style stouts. So maybe me back then, you know, being introduced to the style and drinking and going, holy shit, I've never had a Mexican style, you know, chocolate stout or Mexican style imperial stout. Maybe I'm remembering it being better than it actually was. Could be a lot of things. My palate, but I will say neither of these beers are are anything special. There are way better Mexican style imperial stouts that are out there without question at this point. Um, Eric Gilbert says, I do enjoy six-year-old IPAs from Brooklyn, taking a shot at Eric, especially Brooklyn IPAs, because you know those age well. Um, Joe Ganzel says, is the pepper coming off or uh, more fruity or hot? Definitely not fruity. The ancho in here, it's coming off as a slight spicy slash bitterness in the back of the palate, but not so much on this one. Like, this is very, very slight. The other one, as it opened up, it was a little bit more there. It didn't have, like, a fruity, like, it didn't have, like, a habanero, you know, had a habanero before. And it doesn't have, like, the citrus tones that a, that a habanero would have or something like that. I haven't had an ancho chili just plain, but I'd imagine it's very similar in the fruit uh, quality when you do eat them. But, uh, yeah, no, this is just, like, a slight astringent heat to it. Um, Jesse says another year, you won't see Joe behind that mic with how well he is doing losing weight. Oh, well, thank you, Jesse. Um, I haven't been doing as well the last couple of months, just to be honest with you. I've kind of hit my, like my high school, uh, weight. Uh, and I've just kind of just, I don't know, plateaued a bit. So I need to do a better job. It doesn't help that I review beers every day, but I, I feel if I, um, you know, I pretty much have enough content for the next month or six weeks. So aside from the Albino Rondo beer festival and the bottle share the night before, probably not going to be doing a whole lot of beer drinking over the next couple months. So hopefully, you know, can lose five to 10 pounds in that time. Um, Jake says beers that taste less boozy than they actually are can be dangerous. Yeah, I would say these are dangerous without question. Um, 9% hides them well. And uh, for my buddy Sadiq, who actually asked a question today, I haven't responded yet to any comments uh, today, I don't believe. Uh, but he was like, I wish you would, you know, tell the viewers your price point. And I try to, if it's a commercial beer, when it's a brewery only beer or whatever, i I don't want to say it's pointless, but just let, let it be known that most New England style IPAs and whatnot nowadays are like $16 to $22 a four pack. That's what you pay nowadays, right? Uh, these two beers, I think the Chalk Sombrero was less than three bucks a can for 9%. I think it was like $2.89. And I remember this bomber being like $10. That was in 2012. Bombers are a ripoff. You're not going to find this. But the can of it was, I think it was like less than three bucks. So, you know, not bad. Um, Eric Gilbert says, it can't settle down, son. Just popped a perk, baby. Well, yo, you need to settle down, Eric. I'm going to say it again. You need to settle down. Jesse says, Clown Shoes has definitely gone downhill. Used to love the stuff. Now it's ho-hum. Well, there you go. Uh, I can honestly say I don't drink their stuff on the reg, so to speak. Um, there's just, for me, way better options at this point. And Clown Shoes never really... I mean, I like their Space Cake. I've had a, you know probably like 12 different beers from them in my past, but they've never really blown me away. A couple beers have been really good from them, but they just... I don't know. I just... They just don't really do it for me more often than not, but, you know, to each their own. Uh, Joe says, Stone was the first Mexican stout I ever had. It was okay. I like the Choco Vesa. Uh, I think now you want to talk about quality going on. I think the Choco Vesa, for the most part, has kind of each year dipped in quality a bit. I remember the first couple of years, I thought it was amazing. Last couple of years I had it, it was just, I mean, it was solid. It was a good beer. Um, I do have an original bottle of that that I aged. Maybe I'll do Stone Choco Vesa versus like when the new one comes out this year, 2013, just to see, because this is fun. This is fun to see how these adjuncts uh, hold up in these beers. This is not you know, holding up extremely well, but you know, it's fun still. Alex says there are certainly better Mexican style stouts, but not many. There are sub 250 for a 12 ounce bottle like this. Choco Vesa is the king in this realm, but most of these Mexican style bombers are uh, over 15 bucks. Now, I think Alex, you make a great point. Um, Chaco Sombrero. Uh, yeah. Choco Vesa off the top of my head, the two, you know, well-priced beers um, under three bucks, a can slash bottle. I think stone, what last couple of years have put that in cans. Yeah, you're talking when you talk about Mexican steak, uh, Mexican steak, <laughs> Mexican cake from Westbrook, Hunapu from Cigar City, um, Abraxas from Perennial, and beers like that. Yeah, those are the quality of those are gonna obviously be better than Choco Vesa, in my opinion. And I've had all three of those, and they're all better than Choco Vesa, but they're all also, also like as far as like dollar, or I, I want to say price per ounce, three, four, five times as much. So you get what you pay for. But if you want to get into Mexican style stouts, Imperial stouts specifically, Choco Vesa and this beer aren't bad to try out. You're not you're not breaking the bank to try the style out. I totally agree with that. 
Um, Christoph says he's 83 kilograms. Do you want to convert that to pounds? I don't, I don't, I don't feel like doing the conversion. Christoph, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. This is America. We don't know what we're doing. Jake says, got to say, this Teku feels great in my hand. Might be my new favorite glass. See, Jake, I did not steer you wrong. The Tecos are where it's at. Uh, Craig says, has the canned beer flavor changed since it's been opened? Oh, that's a good question. You want me like, let me cleanse the palate here, Craig. I can just see like people doing ASMR uh, beer reviews. Yeah, yeah, man. I I don't think this is actually the stereo where you'd go like left ear to right ear, but I mean, you know, maybe there's a market for that. Maybe there's a market. I don't know. Let's try and see how this is. Nope, still just as boring as it ever was, <laughs> Craig. Actually, it might be a little bit more oxidized at this point, just based on the fact that it's been in the glass. But yeah, that one has a substantial like cinnamon dryness now. That's a fucking boring beer. I'm pissed off. I'm pissed off. Yeah, Kuvi's coming. Settle down, Nick. Uh, Jesse says he is about to open the last beer I have in my house. Not the night to run out of beer. Jesse, let me just say this. No night is the night to run out of beer. You don't ever want to run out of beer. That's that's just a mistake. Uh, Christoph says 183-ish. Sorry. Okay, so there you go. That's a great weight. I'd love to. I'm in the 220s, so I need to lose probably about another 30 my, my, I want to get down to 200. Once I get 200, I'm going to see how I look and feel. Um, you guys say that I've lost a lot of weight and I'm looking good. I, if I drop another 25 pounds, I feel like I'm probably in the realm that I should be. Um, people always told me, oh, you wear it well or whatever. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what that means exactly. But um, yeah, we'll see. I, I think at 183, I might look a little bit uh, sickly. Um, Nick says, uh, yeah, does the taste improve when you coovy? And I, as I said, we're going to get there. Uh, Eric says, hazy IPAs are about $24, Canadian a four-pack, and 473s for locals. And obviously, that is kind of right in the realm for Americans. I mean, you know, Joe can speak to this. Alex can speak to this. Uh, Jake, uh, any of the Americans watching. If you're talking about a brewery-only release, and a lot of times, you know, when uh, they're released at bottle shops, most four-packs, the cheapest four-pack for a good brewery-only a uh, hazy beer, whether it's a Palau IPA, double IPA, triple IPA, usually $16 a four pack is the cheapest you're going to find it in my neck of the woods. I'll use other half as an example since I'm the other half sniper and that's all I fucking drink apparently. Um, the lowest I've ever paid for a four pack is 16 bucks. The highest I've paid, I believe was 24, I believe on one of them, but most of them are in the 16 to $22 range. The $22 a four pack, other halves are the ones with crazy adjuncts like the raspberry crunchy and the slice of berries that I did the last two weeks. Uh, and the one I just said, uh, posted today, more Citra than all Citra. Those were all $22 a four pack. I'm pretty sure. Uh, most of their, you know, mid range, eight and a half percent double IPAs or regular IPAs in the seven range, usually 18 to $20 a four pack. Um, so, I mean, that's what most people pay. I feel, I mean, if you do the conversion for the Canadians, 24 for four, that's like in the 18 to $20 realm. That's, that's what you pay. Uh, Christoph says this Wasatch Poly is excellent and seven ninety nine a six pack. So that's a Rod J deal. That's a Rod J deal. That's a good, that's a good deal. Eric Gilbert says he's a uh, 25 stone sons. Not going to do conversions because that's how Eric rolls. Nice. Uh, nice trolling there, Eric. Uh, Jake says my fridge is always stock. Haven't ran out of beer in two years. Yeah, no, I'm never going to run out of beer. I have, a, you know, beers in my cellar. I have beers in the fridge. Uh, people send me tons of fucking beer because. I don't know. I, 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 the generosity of everybody has been fantastic, but like, I can't keep up with all the beer mails, man. It's crazy. Um, Bumpy says he's two thirty. Joe, it used to be a better two thirty when the wife was actually attracted to me. Jesse, you look good for two thirty, buddy. Look real good. Uh, Jake says sixteen bucks is cheap, really. Yeah, no, that's the lower end. That's that is cheap at this point. Uh, Christoph says he has 19 of those uh, nitro porters left. That's a lot. Alex says most IPAs are 16, 17. DIPs and sours are 18. Triples and Imperials are 20 to uh, 22 in single cans for seven, eight bucks. Yeah, the problem is a lot of breweries, uh, they don't do single cans. Uh, usually that's bottle shops, and that's unfortunate. Like, I'd love to go to other half and get, like, mixed four packs. Um, a lot of times I don't want to have to, they'll release six different beers. I don't want to go spend $120 on six different beers. I'd like to spend, you know, 40 bucks and get two mixed four packs, but you know, to each, to each their own. A lot of people have no problems. A lot of people mule and buy, you know, fucking cases, whatever. Uh, Erica says America's stuck in the dark ages with a no metric. Yes, we are. Uh, Joe Ganzel says it's about 12 to 16 in the state of Washington, sometimes 20. So yeah, I mean, I would say like the lower end for most is 16. Sometimes you can get 14. The higher end is usually 22. Um, but you're always talking somewhere around three and a half to $5 a can typically. 
That's typically the going rate if you buy them in four packs. Uh, Alex says Trillium does mix four packs, which is amaze balls. Yeah, if I was fucking in Boston, anywhere around Boston or Canton or whatever, I would get tons of mixed four packs, and that's what I drink. Eric Gilbert says I'm 280 and 196 meters. Jesus Christ, Eric. Anyway, I think it's fucking Koofy time, boys and girls. Why? Because it is. I'm going to take a sip of this. Hmm. I didn't rate this, right? This is clearly a better beer. This has actually, now I just took another sip, dark fruits are coming out more than that. Uh, cherry, plum, raisin. This is drinking like a really decently aged imperial stout. A little bit of cinnamon dryness. Not much. There's there's chocolate here, but not as much as I would think there would be. Then again, seven years old, so probably not. No vanilla to speak of. Really no ancho chili. Like I said, slight astringency. I would give the 2012 like a... I can't really deny that. I'm going to give that a 3.5 out of 5. That's how substantially better it is than the base. This beer is way better than the base. Um, and I thought if you would have asked me going into this, which one I'd prefer, I would have said the can all day, every day. Like this can's going to win, right? No, the 2012 just is a better overall beer. Yeah, sure. The, most of the adjuncts have fallen off, but like as far as just an Imperial Stout goes, uh, yeah, it's, it's, way, it's way better. So uh, 3.5 out of 5 and the can over here, 2.8 out of 5. So I'm surprised, but whatever. Anyway, I think we're pretty much even here. Yeah, pretty much. Then. Here we go. Covey! I, maybe screaming that wasn't a good idea with the mic being as close as it is, but whatever. It's a fucking, it's a fucking Covey. It's a Covey. That's what we do, Covey. Uh, Christoph says, my car does 0 to 100 kilometers in 2.37 seconds. Is that the Tesla? And then Joe says, uh, yes, Christoph, I go to Oregon because they have better selection and better prices. Nice. And then 420, um, Christoph says, I can, it's such easy. It's, it's way easier to say 420 than Christoph. Uh, I don't know why. 420 just rolls off the tongue, right? Right, Christoph? It says, copy that. Bend is Beerville, Oregon, right? And he says, yes. Um, Nick says, Colby Nation. And then Eric Gilbert says, Americans, you drive too slow in Canada. And Canadians probably drive too fast in America. Aren't they uh, increasing the uh, speed limit on the four? Was it the 408 or the 400s in general in Ontario? I'm pretty sure they are. And then Christoph says, audio is a five out of five, Joe. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I don't know. When I watch it back, I'm probably going to be sickened by the quality. And then Jake says, watch these two be amazing together. Fuck me. If they are, I'm, yeah. I, that would be the most surprising coovie ever. Anyway. Let's give it a, a little bit of a swirl here. Uh, yeah, so it looks the exact same as the other two. There is no head. I mean, they've been out of the you know out of the can and out of the bottle and in my glass for a while. So carbonation's probably died down a bit. Lots of alcohol legs though that I'm noticing now without the uh, the head. Um, yeah, looks the same as both beers. Let's get a let's get a nose. Well, I'll tell you right off the fucking bat that nose smells way better than either of them. Wow, I'm getting a ton of like a uh, ton of ancho and a ton of cinnamon. Yeah, that smells fucking cool. Uh, ton, yeah, so I don't know what it is about Kuvis, and it just could be the perception I have of them in my mind going into it. But this has more vanilla, more cinnamon, and more ancho than either of them combined. It's just a ton. I don't. It's crazy. It smells like a cinnamon, cinnamon crumb cake. There's like this really big bready, like big bready, uh, malt character to this one. Not quite like roasted or charred or just, you know, anything that would be chocolate or coffee. It's like oh, a little bit of coffee, actually. What the fuck? I don't understand how this smells so good. Now we just have the chat talking about, uh, you know, um, if Christoph says he sets the autopilot to 145 kilometers, Eric. Uh, Jesse says now it'll taste like a Canadian Mexican stout. Uh, Eric Gilbert says the limits did increase or are increasing on the 400 series highways. Uh, Christoph says RCMP only lights me when I visit BC. They never stop me. Uh, and Joe says you have inspired me to open up my two year old, two year old what, uh, Joe? You said two year old CHI, like Chicago, like shy. I'd like to know what beer, Joe. You got me, got me curious. Anyway, this smells awesome. Honestly, this smells fucking awesome. Oh, Chimay. Oh, Jesus. So what I was going to do, Joe, is I was going to actually do Chimay 
I had it written down which ones I was going to do. I was going to do Shimei as far as a, a review. If you guys want to pick up some Shimei's, I was going to do Shimei Premier and Shimei uh, Reserve, the red and the blue. At some point in the future, pick up a, a bottle of each and do them in the same video. So if anybody wants to grab some Shimei, everybody out there can get Shimei and you got to drink along and whatever. Uh, maybe I'll even invite people on. You know, fellow beer tubers, you guys want to get it. We can do, we'll have multiple people, whatever. Let me know. Yeah, the grand, you got the grand reserve, huh? Yeah. Yeah, anyway, I want to, I want to drink this because it smells fucking delicious. So cheers, everyone. Nope. Nope. Not worse than the 2018, but holy fuck. This is, this did a real, this is a 180 real quick because the nose is fucking dynamite and the taste is just boring as all hell. Yeah, it's fucking bland. It's just, it's oxidized. That's the best way I can explain it. You, you guys have had oxidized beers before, I think, most of you. It just has that very stale, like cardboard, just like, bland taste on the back end like the flavors up front are okay but it just dies out and you're just left with pretty much nothing devoid of most flavors fuck a disappointment <sighs> yeah so the taste is very akin to the 2018 where it's just maybe not as charry or an ashy with the with the malt character but it's just very bland. There's a little bit of like dark chocolate. That cinnamon and ancho that was so vibrant in the nose of this blend is just not there. It has a, I'd say it has a cinnamon dryness and a, a oxidation, a cardboard finish to it. That's what I'm getting for the most part. Yeah, it's fucking just. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you, clown shoes. All right, not fuck you, clown shoes, because I've had good beers you made, but God damn it, man. Um, yeah, the, the Kuvi, I'm going to give it three out of five. It's better than the base, but barely it's like fucking barely better. So to recap the 2018 one year old, I, I shouldn't say base. It was a 2018 one year old, uh, can 2.8 out of five, just fucking oxidized. Just kind of just not for me. Lowest rated beer. I think on my channel, uh, which is crazy. Um, the 2012 vintage 3.5 out of five. Pretty good. Drinks more of like a regular Imperial Stout. Nice dark fruits. A little bit of cinnamon. A uh, little little bit of like the chocolate. But, you know, most of the adjunct's gone. It's a seven-year-old beer. You expect it. And then the Kove, the fucking Kuvi, gets a three out of five. Better than the 2018. Far from the 2012. And just an overall disappointing comparison review. Here's the thing, though. Even though I'm disappointed, I kind of knew this going in. I think, I want to say, I think I was... Um, a little bit more optimistic coming into today's review because last week doing the Yeti and then doing the 2012 chocolate OK Yeti, which I thought was just going to be a fucking mess and that beer getting a 475 out of five and being one of the best age beers I've ever had and just like defying all expectations I had for it. I thought maybe this would you know, hold true. It did not. Um, the, I think this review though is like a great example of what I said earlier. Do not age a bunch of adjunct beers unless you've had the beer already fresh because you can see what happens here. And these beers, from my recollection, what I remember uh, having this beer multiple times fresh is way better than anything that's aged. All right, so let's go to comments here. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ, a lot of comments. Um, Jesse says, Joe, they have to get you to help blend the Firestone, Firestone Walker yearly stout. Uh, maybe if I kiss enough ass, uh, they'll send me there. You know, I'll, do, I'll give it an automatic five out of five, like a shameless beer tuber. Um, Craig says, shame the 2018 hit the wall. Yeah, Craig, you know what I'm actually kind of bummed out on is that you guys get that 7% version, as I mentioned earlier. That's that's bullshit. I would have liked to see what you thought about the regular 9%. Did, did, they, did you ever find any information why they gave you the uh, lower ABV one? Makes no sense. Um, Jesse says he's in for the Shimei. Yeah, so we'll see. Um, I, I would probably, any duo review or trio or quad review or whatever, any kind of live beer review I do with friends, I probably keep it to like four or five people. So we don't have people talking over one another, whatnot, but, uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. I'll put you down Jesse and then we'll see who else, uh, can get in on it. 
Um, it'll be one of those things too, where if people join, they don't have to have necessarily both, maybe one or the other, but we'll see. Uh, Nick says, I have an aged bottle of Chimay Blue. Well, if you can get a red, Nick, then you're you're welcome to join as well. Uh, Christoph says, uh, Christoph and Eric are just talking about crazy, crazy speeds in their cars all over the highways. Uh, he did a 155-ish near the Nevada Highway a Patrol, gives zero fucks on our long drives. Uh, Jake wishes he was going to, he says, damn, I was so ready to be right, thinking that the, the Kuvi was going to be uh, amazing. Let me tell you something, Jake. Based on the blend and the nose, I was like, holy shit, it's going to be amazing. Totally disappointing. Uh, and then Jesse says, I take back <laughs> I take back Fire a Stonewalker having you blend. Well, that's that's that's, that's very smart of you. Um, Eric says, Shemay White is a favorite. Nice, Eric. Um, Joe Gansel says, it is spot on. My God, is it is excellent. So he's a two-year-old uh, Grand Reserve that he's drinking, and apparently it's fucking just perfect right now. So that's awesome. Uh, uh, Christoph says, another sub three. I don't... Oh, oh, for the rating. I was like, wait, what? What are you talking about? Yeah, no, another sub three for sure. Um we have who else here? Uh, Jesse says deflated clown shoes. Yeah, they've you know what they've deflated me. Fuck clown shoes. They've 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 they have ruined me this evening. They have completely ruined me. Joe Gansel says he likes the Chimay White. Uh, Jesse says clown shoes are scary to some. <laughs> Christoph. Um, and then he says clown shoe knockoffs. The new It will be scary as fuck. Yeah, who saw the the It trailer? The It too. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm down. I really like the original. I like the original miniseries, but then I also like the movie that was released a couple years ago. That was good. Uh, Joe Gansel has never had clown shoes. Not sure if I want to try it now. Joe, here's what I will say: you being on the West Coast and you have you know available to you our amazing beers. Uh, most people now get amazing beers, but on the West Coast, you guys have been you know spoiled in riches for how many years? Yeah, you're not missing much with Clown Shoes. I actually have a couple of their aged barrel aged beers that I have two couple years old uh, that I'll review at some point, or maybe I'll just drink them and not review them. Clown Shoes, I still think is a contract brewery. Like I said, I think they brew at Harpoon. They used to brew at um, Mercury. I've never been overly impressed with their stuff, but I have enjoyed some of it. But the sheer amount of beers we have at our disposal at this point, you know, 7,500 breweries, everybody has, you know, tens of tens and 20 low 10 to 20 30 40 local breweries yeah i don't think anybody should really be seeking out clown shoes in general um nick says i think i have an aged red too 2015 cork 750 yo it's not gonna matter aged or fresh i mean I, it's gonna matter like taste wise but like if you can get the beer i don't care what year it is it's gonna be whatever i can pick up so here's the thing about chimay like when I pick them off of uh, shelves here, just a drink or or to, when I'm going to review it, they might be six months old. They might be a year old. They might be two years old. Who knows? Depends on where I go. Might be already aged for me. Um, Joe Gazza says the book is better. It's usually the case. It usually is the case, especially with Stephen King stuff. It's usually the case. Uh, Eric Gilbert says this Mamzella is going to be good. Sons. Jesse says clown shoes, barley wines are good. Yeah, you know what? And Jesse makes a great point. I would say if I seek anything out from clown shoes, it's going to be their barrel aged um, barley wines or their barley wines in general. But I think most of them are barrel aged. They're like the Pierre Ferrand billionaire. Um, I also, uh, I have their Ride the Lion, um, which I believe is a wee heavy barrel aged. And that was really good as well. Um, Christoph says Tim Curry is brutal, but Bill does a good uh, job book has the orgy they cut from the movie obviously oh fucking is that what is that what uh you're disappointed in Christoph? was the orgy being cut and then joe gansel just says sans or does he say sans i don't know i don't want to be too loud but uh yeah relatively disappointing live review tonight but you know what not disappointing because man i had a consistent 10 to 12 people watching and uh you guys have all been cool as hell um Whenever you guys join, always bring something along. Let me know what you're drinking. Let everyone else know what you're drinking. Um, like I said, for fellow beer tubers, even people that just comment, we're going to do Chimay uh, Red and uh, Blue at some point. Uh, that's that's The goal is to do a live review of uh, Red and Blue. Probably bring on four to five other beer tubers and make a big uh, brouhaha, so to speak. Terrible pun. Fuck me. I'm terrible with puns. You know that? Hashtag dad jokes. Hashtag sad jokes. Uh but yeah, it, it's going to be one of those things where grab a Chimay Red, grab a Chimay Blue, and we're going to drink it at some point. Um, maybe that will be the next one. You guys want to do that maybe? Maybe on uh, June 3rd, Chimay Blue, Chimay Red. Um, you know what? Fuck it. 
I will. So rain our parade. I went into tonight, not knowing what beers we're going to review on June 3rd, but we're going to do, I'm going to at least it's, I'm going to guarantee that I'm going to have the red and the blue. I can't guarantee anybody else is going to join me, but for my beer tubing friends, I'm going to see who can get them. I'm going to choose people to, 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 you know, hang out here and do a review. I'm going to try to keep it to four or five total. If you don't get selected, do not be offended. We're going to do more duo trio quad, you know, fucking live reviews, but, uh, that's totally what we're going to do. Shamay red and blue June 3rd, Monday, June 3rd. So grab them. Um, if you guys want to, uh, you know, you know, it, just, just grab them for, you know, hopefully that live review. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, read some of these reviews and probably shut it down. Uh, we have, uh, Jesse says, their Imperial Stouts, lip smacking too. Uh, some of them, some of them have been good. This one, apparently not as good as I remember it. Uh, Eric Gilbert says, average patrol review. Yeah, totally average. And uh, Bumpy says, yeah, except the Mexican ones. I should have read that first. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Joe Ganzel says, I find the Monday live shows excellent and fun. Keep them up. Well, thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. I uh, The reason why I do these, and I don't always, I haven't invited anyone is because I want to do something live because here's the thing. Before I started my channel last year, I was exactly like most of you guys viewing. I like watching people do live reviews. I don't care if there's one person or, you know, a half dozen, whatever. And I like the interaction. I like just sitting down on a, whatever night it is and just drinking along with somebody else, whether or not they're drinking the same beer I am and just chatting. And that's kind of what I do here. Uh, the focus on this live review isn't really the beers. It's really chatting with you guys. That's what I enjoy the most which is why I read all the comments and which is why I kind of focus on the comments. I feel like if the people who watch this back on replay probably don't enjoy these as much as we do live because, you know, I'm constantly reading comments. So even with the timestamps in the fucking description box, you cannot just jump to the review and be like, oh, he's going to, you know, it's going to be a five to six minute review or whatever. No, it's going to be fucking 20 minutes and we're going to chat. And that's, that's what I like. So, you know, I appreciate each and every one of you showing up. I don't say that each week just to hear myself talk and be like, oh, I thank you guys. No, I, I really do. I am I am blown away that I have 400 subs. I'm blown away that I have 12 people watching right now. That like kind of blows my mind. I, I totally appreciate. I really do. It's, um, yeah, it's crazy. Anyway, uh, go on to uh, Christoph says, and you said subpar content, Joe. Your content is Mike-tastic and to the point. F that. I like your channel. Oh my God, someone likes my channel. Christoph, that might be on you, buddy. Uh, Nick says, sounds good. So yeah, Nick, if you have the two aged ones, man, yeah, you're 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 more than welcome. Same thing with you, Jesse. You can grab two. I'll pencil both of you guys in um, and we'll go from there. Jake says, I think I've seen Shamay around before. Jake, being an Aerie, I can get, I can get, I can guarantee you this. I know you have some good beer stores, but you could go to Wagman's and find Shamay, both of them. Maybe not individual bottles. But you should be. Maybe the 750 cork and cage. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, Joe Gansel says, I have one more blue. Just let me know. We can talk about it for sure. Jo like I said, Joe, uh, you know, pick pick up a red and uh, sit on the blue and, you know, come and chat with us. You're more than welcome. Always in the chat room. And, uh, you know, even let us know what you're thinking about it, man. You fucking just hang out. And yeah, for sure. Uh, Christoph says, I love cars, firearms and beer, but I will try to keep it real. <laughs> Fair enough. Good, sir. Uh, Jesse says they have a living dead Imperial Stout. Yeah, didn't they have to change the name back in the day? I almost remember that. Alex Dudek says, all right, hockey time. Be good, y'all. Let's go Blues. Yes, um, the Blues and the Sharks are playing, and uh, they're down one nothing right now in the series. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, good luck to your Blues, Alex, and appreciate you stopping by. Uh, Christoph says Knights. The Knights have been eliminated. I'm sorry, Christoph. They got eliminated in a really shitty way, though. That was an unfortunate call. Nick says, yeah, I love the Monday stuff, not even because it tends to head to my channel. It'd be an opportunity for your own after chat hangout, but Monday breaks up the week. The reason why I picked Monday is nobody else really live streams. I don't want to step on anyone else's toes. And it just seems to be, I don't know about you guys, but like, you know, after the weekend, you go back to work or whatever on Monday. It's like, I want to sit back and drink a beer and just hang out on Monday night. So that's why I do it. Uh, but Jesse says, I think it's called Undead Fight or something. It used to be Undead uh, Party Crasher, I believe. And then it was it used to be vampire something. They had to change it. I don't know. There was there was lawsuits and stuff involved. And uh, Nick says also Covies. Yeah, Covies are always, always the way to go. Uh, Drunken one still here says we thank you for doing these. Well, thank you, Drunken one. I do appreciate it, good sir. Um, these aren't quite the streams that you hang out on. Some of those are fucking insane. I watch a lot of those back, and man, there's some crazy shit. A lot of times you guys delete them because uh, <laughs> for good reason. Eric Eric Gilbert says Kovi Lambic baby. You know what? You know what I wish uh, Eric. Eric, how many uh, how many loons have you had? Like 
Cantillo ones. Have you had many? Um, or Drew Fontenin or any of those? I, I need to review some of those, honestly. Jesse says, I can get two bottles for less than 15. Which ones are they again? Uh, the Chimay, the Chimay Red, uh, which I believe is the Premier, and uh, the Chimay Blue, which is the uh, the Reserve. Um, you know, everyone goes by the colors of the caps and whatnot. So the blue and the red, very simple. Like America, just no white, red and blue. You're good to go. Um, and then uh, Christoph says, shitty call. You bet it was. It was. I, the way I look at it, Christoph, and not many people are going to care about the hockey here, but um, it was a terrible call. You still can't give up four goals on a five-minute power play, but you should have probably never been in that situation. Two-minute call at the most. It's a shitty situation. The NHL playoffs, as far as the officiating goes this year, has been absolutely horseshit. I don't know how you have four officials on the ice, two refs, two linesmen, and still miss as many calls as you do. Maybe they need to fucking bring in like 40 refs. Or maybe they just have, you know, just uh, people from Toronto make the calls. I have no idea, but it's fucking gross is what it is. Uh, and then Joe Ganzel, uh, he um, re reiterates that it is the blue and the red. So I will say this, June 3rd, it's a Monday, like all my Monday reviews, Monday, June 3rd, Chimay Blue, Chimay Red. If you can get it, drink along with us. If you uh, are one of my friends, beer tubing friends, Nick, Jesse, already penciled in, probably invite two more, maybe three. Uh, you guys are more than welcome to join. Uh, we'll do a huge live review, probably be a couple hours long, whatever the case may be. And uh, yeah, we should have a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, anyway, um, well, I, I, I think I'm done here. Uh, it, I don't know, Nick, if you plan on starting something after this. Uh, Eric Gilbert says he does not have any loons. No, no cantaloons, cantillons. It's unfortunate, Eric. Those are probably beers that you would fucking absolutely enjoy. Jesse says he'll look for both of them this week. And Christoph says, fucking right, Joe. Thanks. Well, that's just my opinion, but I think that's probably the general opinion of everybody aside from Sharks fans. Uh, Nick says he can do something. Uh, so if you guys want to join over on Nick's channel, Maxwell Star Beer Reviews, uh, we don't read the comments as frequently as I do on his channel. Not even blaming Nick. I'm just saying we don't because it's just a generalized chat. But if you want to come over... And uh, watch us do stupid shit and have people be very ignorant and, uh, you know, just douchebags in general, including myself. Feel free to join us. Uh, we'll probably be over there in a little bit. Um, for the, everybody else, again, Monday, June 3rd, 8 p.m. Eastern, Chimay Blue, Chimay Red. We're going to have an awesome trio review at the very least, maybe more. Pick up those beers. Chimay is available everywhere. So Rain Air Parade or whoever else joins, I don't want to hear like, oh, I can't get the beer. We all can fucking get the beer. Do you want to pay five, six bucks for a bottle of it? Probably not. But uh, at the same time, if you've never had it before, you owe it to yourself to grab it. That's what I would say. Anyway, uh, let me shout out everybody here before we leave. Got a shout out, baby. Who out there have uh, uh, different uh, beer tubing channels? So we'll go in order. Shout outs. Craig, Kent Beer Reviews. Check them out. Awesome UK uh, beer tuber. Nick over Maxwell Star. Uh, no longer Maxwell Star Beer Reviews. Just Maxwell Star. We're going over his channel after this. Check him out. A lot of beer content. Uh Shout out to uh, Jake says me, aka Jake, for uh, showing up. Shout out to Drunken One. Uh, he is a home brewer, does garden stuff. Cool dude. Jesse of our Bumpy Road Brewery, home brewer, also does tastings, not reviews. Shout out to 420 Christoph for showing up. He's always a, a, a very loyal supporter, and I appreciate him watching and commenting and everything. Uh, shout out to Joe Gansel. Uh, I noticed Joe, uh, you know, a lot of my beer tuning friends, he watches their videos and he always has very nice, uh, positive comments. Good dude. Uh, so thank you very much, Joe, for your viewership as well. Um, shout out to, uh, who else we have? There's other people that came in halfway. Eric Gilbert, the troll of all trolls, but a good troll. Cool dude. I, I enjoy the trolls. Shout out to Ash, uh, Ashley over at Sexton Brewing. Quick shout out in a, uh, less than two weeks, we're going to be at Ashley's house and we're going to be doing a live bottle share. Probably on his, maybe not his channel, maybe Nick's channel, maybe my channel. I don't know. We do a lot, whole bunch of crazy beer reviews that are going to be uploaded after that. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for that. That should be a lot of fun. I'm actually going to do a vlog probably for next weekend that will include information about the 2019 El Rhino Bino, uh, El Bino Rhino Beer Festival and the bottle share and what you can expect from my channel as far as like content for that. Um, there's going to be a lot of content over the next probably month, month and a half from that share and that festival. So uh, on location and the whole nine. So it should be fun, uh, I think, anyway. Um, shout out to Earth. Earth just showed up and says, clown shoes. But Earth is a good dude. Hooked me up with a beer mail uh, late, um, you know, like a month ago. I sent him some stuff back. He's been enjoying it. So shout out to him. Shout out to Alex Dudik. Good dude. Uh, constant, uh, you know, positive guy as well. So many positive people here. Kind of crazy. Um, I, I, you know, I, I just, I'm kind of blown away at so many fucking viewers of my channel that always leave positive comments, always want to chat and stuff. I just, I'd never thought I'd see the day. 
really never did. So yeah, I think that's it. Everybody else, very consistent. Um, so shout out to everybody. We're going to shut this down again, Monday, June 3rd, 8 PM Eastern standard time. Shamay blue, Shamay red, grab them. Uh, Jake says no whole planet joke today. None today, Jake. I think I'm done with the whole planet joke. You know why? Cause it's a fucking terrible joke. Um, yeah, so anyway, Maxwell Star says, it's still Maxwell Star's Beer Reviews, just the channel name has changed to Maxwell Star. So technically, Maxwell Star's Beer Reviews, but he changed the channel to Maxwell Star because Nick likes to fuck with everybody. I don't know what's going on. Terrible. Joe says, whose channel? Maxwell Star. Just click on the, the three little um, three little dots next to his name and click uh, go to channel, but don't subscribe to Nick. He doesn't need more subscribers. No, go ahead. Subscribe to him. We chat over there. Uh, Jesse says he's out of beer. Got to try to go to bed next to my mean wife. Well, you have a good one, uh, Jesse. Uh, talk to you later. And uh, Eric Gilbert says, seen real loons, birds, and people, for fuck's sake. And he says, Alberta L, eh? You have fun doing so. And uh, yeah, cheers to everybody. Thanks for showing up. Going to shut this down and uh, hopefully see you in three weeks. Shimei, be there or be square. Holy fuck. That's what I'm ending this with. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Goodbye. ASMR beer.